Um, flow through a conversion nozzle uh, can be established in one of two ways. Uh, one by pulling the flow through the nozzle, the other one is by pushing the flow through the nozzle. Uh, what I mean by pulling the flow through the nozzle is that you know we uh, for instance we have a conversion nozzle like this and uh, we actually keep the stagnation conditions fixed, the upstream stagnation conditions fixed. and we vary the, uh, the downstream, the ambient pressure downstream of the nozzle. So, that is uh, what I mean by uh, pulling the flow through the nozzle. Now, in the case of uh, pushing the flow uh, through the nozzle, we would keep the ambient pressure or downstream ambient pressure fixed and vary the inlet stagnation condition. Okay. Let us now take a look at each one of this in turn starting with uh, pulling the flow through the nozzle. Okay. Uh, so, we uh, will uh, label the inlet as station 1 and the exit as station 2 uh, in this uh, discussion. Okay. So, uh, let us say that you know we have uh, set the, um, the ambient pressure uh, to be uh, less than the uh, inlet pressure. So, that uh, flow is established in the, uh, in the nozzle. So, the inlet state is denoted 1 and as I said exit state is uh, denoted as 2 and the flow through the nozzle is an isentropic process, but the pressure in this case is not uh, low enough to accelerate the flow to uh, the speed of sound. Okay. So, what we can do now is actually uh, uh, try to lower the pressure further. For example, uh, we could lower the pressure ambient pressure to something like this. In which case the uh, flow uh, would expand to this pressure and the exit state would be like this and we could keep going like this until the pressure um, uh, is low enough that uh, we actually uh, accelerate the fluid to the sonic speed at the uh, exit of the nozzle. So, for example, if uh, this were to be the ambient pressure then the exit state is the sonic state because the fluid accelerates to the speed of sound. So, that is how we establish the flow uh, through the nozzle by pulling the flow okay, by continuously or uh, by continuously lowering the ambient pressure and the inlet stagnation conditions notice that the inlet stagnation conditions have remained constant throughout this. Okay. So, the stagnation state, stagnation temperature and pressure remain constant throughout. Okay. So, we keep lowering the ambient pressure and we establish a flow through the nozzle. Okay. So, here uh, we have a situation uh, where we finally uh, reach the sonic state at the exit of the nozzle. So, the speed of sound here is equal to the uh, speed of sound at that temperature. Okay. Now, what would happen if we were to lower the pressure at the ambient pressure furthermore? Okay. So, that is something that we will uh, come back and discuss. Notice that at the exit now uh, m is equal to 1 and the flow is subsonic throughout the conversion nozzle. Now, let us see uh, how we establish a flow in the same conversion nozzle by pushing the flow through the nozzle. So, you may recall that here uh, ambient condition, ambient pressure is fixed. And inlet stagnation uh, condition, notably inlet stagnation pressure So, let us say that to begin with we have uh, uh, kept the inlet stagnation pressure at a certain value and the ambient pressure is p equal to p ambient. So, that is uh, represented by this isobar throughout. Okay. So, the fluid uh, enters at a certain static pressure p1 and accelerates to uh, the ambient pressure p2 in this case. Now, we raise the stagnation pressure. Again, here the idea is continuously uh, uh, raise the stagnation pressure until the uh, exit state becomes the sonic state or the speed of sound, I am sorry, the velocity at the exit is equal to the speed of sound. Okay. Now, remember uh, isobars 
decrease in this direction. Okay. So, when we raise the stagnation pressure that means that we are moving on to an isobar that looks like this. Okay. So, stagnation pressure increases in this direction. So, this is the new uh, isobar and uh, state 1 the inlet pr static pressure is likely to be higher because the inlet stagnation pressure has become higher. What is that? T naught is maintained constant in this uh, particular uh, in this particular case because we can uh, change T naught also, but normally uh, P naught is increased. Let us say this is uh, static state 1 and now uh, the uh, fluid expands inside the nozzle, it is still subsonic. Notice that m is equal to 1 is uh, over here. So, the flow is still subsonic, but it gets uh, I am sorry. So, it expands up to this pressure which is equal to the ambient pressure. So, now the acceleration uh, inside the nozzle is more than what it was before. Remember this quantity uh, V 2 square over 2, this is V 2 square over 2 C p. So, you can see that V 2 square over 2 C p is higher in this case when compared to the previous case that means the flow is accelerating uh, even more inside the nozzle. So, we keep going until we reach a value of uh, stagnation pressure which is such that the fluid expands to the uh, speed of sound at the exit and P 2 is equal to P ambient in this case. Still the flow is subsonic in the nozzle reaching sonic state at the exit. Okay. So, state point 0 since we are maintaining T naught uh, constant state point 0 keeps sliding along this line T naught equal to constant and because we are maintaining the ambient pressure fixed state point 2 which is the exit state point uh, keeps sliding along this isobar corresponding to P equal to P ambient. So, that is what we have shown here. So, state uh, so state point 0 slides like this, state point 2 slides like this until we reach a value of P naught for which the exit state is the sonic state. So, once again here also the question of what happens when we increase the stagnation pressure in this case further what happens in this case. And the previous case what we said was what happens if we lower the stagnation um, sorry the ambient pressure some more. So, that would correspond to for example, the ambient pressure being something like this. So, this would be the new ambient pressure and in this case if we increase the stagnation pressure even more this would be the new stagnation pressure. So, in this case uh, since the uh, uh, exit state 2 is already uh, at the sonic state any further changes in downstream pressure cannot be communicated upstream and it is also uh, not possible to uh, increase the flow speed beyond the speed of sound in this case. Okay. So, what we would get uh, is the same uh, process line in the T s diagram there will be no change to this. Okay. So, the ambient pressure will be like this. So, what would happen in this case is that we would have the exit state continuing to be at the same sonic state, but now in this case the exit pressure would be greater than the ambient pressure. So, the flow will come out of the nozzle So, this is this is the ambient which is at ambient pressure. So, the flow comes out of the nozzle at a pressure P 2 which is greater than P ambient. So, the flow comes out at a higher pressure than the ambient pressure which means uh, the flow has to expand some more and reduce its pressure in order to equilibrate with the ambient pressure. Okay. So, that is why uh, when the exit pressure of the fluid is greater than the ambient pressure the flow is said to be under expanded. Meaning, it needs to expand some more outside the nozzle in order to equilibrate, in order to reduce its pressure and equilibrate with the ambient. Now, in this case, 
state 1 because we have changed the upstream condition remember we do not face the same difficulty as we faced in the previous case that the change in pressure cannot be communicated upstream because the flow is already moving with the speed of sound as the exit. In this case we are changing the stagnation pressure upstream of the nozzle. So, definitely the change there will be a change in the flow field inside the nozzle. So, in fact state point 1 would be at a higher pressure compared to this remember. So, uh, the new state point the static pressure corresponding to the new state point 1 will be higher than the previous one and the expansion inside the nozzle will again be up to the sonic state. So, this would be the process curve inside the uh, nozzle. However, P2 in this case will be greater than P ambient like before. P1 will be greater than the earlier P1. However, st uh, exit state can still be only be sonic and P2 will be greater than P ambient. Remember, we wrote down the area uh, Mach number relationship. So, uh, dA over A was equal to m square minus 1 uh, dV over V. So, in this case there is a discontinuity in the uh, in the uh, area nozzle area profile at the exit. So, it just ends abruptly. So, uh, the in the in the case of the flow or I mean in the case of the fluid it will uh, reach uh, accelerate to sonic speed at the exit always which is why uh, we get the exit state to be sonic state always in this case because of the discontinuity in the in the profile and P2 in this case again will also be greater than the ambient pressure. But here uh, the ambient pressure remains the same, uh, the exit pressure has simply become higher than the ambient pressure. Okay, exit pressure was equal to ambient pressure uh, previously. Now, because we have increased the stagnation pressure and this is being done upstream of the nozzle, the exit pressure is higher than the ambient pressure, but it is still sonic state. So, the process curve definitely changes uh, in this case, whereas the process curve <coughs> remains the same in this case. So, those are the two differences, I am sorry that is the most important difference between the two cases, but P2 is greater than P ambient in this case also and the flow is under expanded in this case as well. The fluid has to expand further outside the nozzle. So, whenever the fluid is under expanded, further expansion takes place outside in the ambient so that the uh, fluid can um, decrease its pressure and equilibrate with the ambient. So, typically what would happen is uh, if I have uh, let us say the, this is my uh, nozzle. So, when the uh, jet issues out of the nozzle, it has to undergo further expansion which means the jet swells. So, it becomes bigger in size. So, the jet swells in size. So, this is the jet boundary and what would happen is eventually the jet would uh, sort of contract like this then again eventually again swell and then uh, contract and so on. So, it will take some distance uh, to equilibrate with the ambient condition. It cannot be done instantaneously. So, the uh, pressure inside the jet bounces up and down until after several bounces it equilibrates with the ambient pressure. If the exit pressure were exactly equal to the ambient pressure, so for example, uh, corresponding to uh, this case uh, let us say. <coughs> Corresponding to this case, the uh, jet because its pressure is exactly equal to the ambient pressure, it will neither swell nor uh, shrink, but it will come out uh, at a constant diameter equal to the exit diameter when it is correctly expanded. Notice that state 2 would be uh, termed correctly expanded when the exit pressure, the speed of when the exit speed is the speed of sound and the exit pressure uh, is equal to the ambient pressure. And notice that even in the uh, other cases the exit pressure is always equal to the ambient pressure ok, but we do not call that correctly expanded because the flow is subsonic ok. So, the speed of the once the flow speed reaches the speed of sound then there is a possibility that its pressure could be different from the ambient pressure. Whenever the, uh, the flow the uh, exit state 
uh, is a subsonic state, the exit pressure will always be equal to the ambient pressure. Now, the exit pressure can be different from ambient pressure only when the exit state is a sonic state. It can be different. For example, uh, the exit pressure here is different from the ambient pressure, right. So, that is why in this case, we particularly denote or say that the flow is correctly expanded because the, the speed is equal to the speed of sound and the pressure is equal to the ambient pressure. In this case, the jet diameter is constant and equal to the exit uh, nozzle exit diameter. Okay? The same is true uh, in this case also. Notice that uh, the flow would be correctly expanded just when it reaches the sonic speed and its pressure is equal to the ambient pressure. The ambient, the exit pressure is always equal to the ambient pressure for the subsonic exit case. Okay? When it becomes sonic and its pressure is equal to the ambient pressure, it is called correctly expanded. After that, if we decrease the pressure further, then the flow is said to be over expanded. Okay? So, whenever the flow is under expanded, the jet when it comes out, it swells like this. Right? It swells like this and then goes through several such bounces before it equilibrates with the, uh, with the ambient pressure. Uh, this can be actually seen um, very nicely in this picture. Okay? So, here is a picture of uh, the SR-71 uh, taking off from the Dryden Air Force Base. So, you can see these uh, alternating structures here. So, these are called the shock diamonds. Okay? So, these are the So, this illustrates the uh, bouncing of the pressure of the fluid as it equilibrates with the ambient pressure. Okay. So, depending upon uh, how uh, under expanded the fluid is, if the fluid is severely under expanded, then the distance taken to equilibrate with the, atm with the atmospheric pressure will be longer, you will see more shock diamonds. Okay. If it is uh, slightly under expanded, then you may see only one or two shock diamonds and the flow will equilibrate with the ambient pressure very, very quickly. Okay. But the important point is that, you know, it is possible to have the exit pressure of the fluid different from the ambient pressure in the case of the conversion nozzle when the exit speed is equal to the speed of sound. And the exit speed is less than the speed of sound, the exit pressure is always equal to the ambient pressure. Again, because information any change in downstream pressure is communicated immediately upstream to the fluid. So, the uh, fluid uh, pressure is the same as the ambient pressure. Now, um, because part of the expansion takes place outside the nozzle as I have sketched here, it is a sort of mandatory or essential in propulsion application to have the nozzle profile itself like this a convergent divergent nozzle profile. Okay? Because if the fluid expands in the atmosphere, then the, uh, uh, the resulting uh, force is exerted against the atmosphere and is not realized as thrust. Remember, we can realize the uh, force due to expansion as a thrust only when the fluid expands against a nozzle or a metal surface. Right? So, it has to be forced against a metal. Right? Which is why, uh, in order not to lose too much of the thrust uh, to expansion outside the nozzle, uh, propulsion applications tend to have uh, convergent divergent nozzle, if the loss outside is too much. Otherwise, uh, it may just be sufficient to have a convergent nozzle itself, okay? because it is simpler in construction. The convergent divergent nozzle is uh, more difficult to operate, it has other opera operational issues. Okay? So, a rocket nozzle for example, would be convergent divergent because there will be too much loss of thrust uh, if you do not use the divergent part. Okay? Whereas, in an aircraft engine, a convergent part itself is okay. The flow may be uh, under expanded, but not severely under expanded. Okay? So, convergent nozzle is sufficient for uh, an aircraft engine okay? because after exp uh, extracting the, uh, the uh, the enthalpy uh, or after converting the enthalpy of the fluid to turbine work, the only the remaining part is converted to thrust in the case of an aircraft engine. So, the inlet stagnation pressure is not as high as it is in the case of a rocket engine because there is no turbine in the case of a rocket engine. The entire enthalpy of the, uh, the high temperature fluid has to be converted to kinetic energy or thrust. Okay? So, if you use only a convergent nozzle in the case of a uh, rocket nozzle. Uh, rocket engine, then 
uh, there will be tremendous loss of thrust.